Joining us on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line, we are thoroughly enjoying her work calling the NBA Finals with Mark Kesticher and P.J. Carlissimo on ESPN Radio. Her analysis on the hoop scene is top-notch, and we say hey to Doris Burke here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Doris? I am superb, getting a little bit fatigued from the back and forth between coasts, but yes. uh the series has been worth it, that's for sure. No question about it. I totally agree with you on it. I have thoroughly enjoyed watching these finals as they currently are playing out. What would you say is the difference maker through the first five games entering game six of, of these finals? Doris? Yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd point to the play of the respective stars. And I try to remember, as I call these games, Rich, that there is 10 years difference and six finals experience difference between Jason Tatum and and Stephen Curry. And I think for Jason, two things are in play the deeper this wears on, obviously inexperience, but also then fatigue, I think, contributing to some of his turnovers. And we talk all the time, Rich, about, you know, you have to have great physical and mental stamina to play against Stephen Curry. And we're talking about when you're guarding. I think what's getting overlooked is the level of defense being played by the Golden State Warriors. So I think many things, obviously, but I, I look directly to the best players between between these two teams. And what would you say, uh, I, I kind of touched upon this with your colleague Jeff Van Gundy, also calling these finals for the worldwide leader. Um, I touched upon it with him yesterday about the the Celtics' reactions to some of these calls and how mm -hmm. – uh, the fourth quarter, you could really point to their their demeanor um, yeah. and and say that that was part of their downfall in Game Five, Doris. A hundred, a hundred percent, and I think it goes back even further than that because I had the Eastern Conference Finals as well. I had part of their uh, Milwaukee series, and Rich, uh, to me, that's immaturity as well. And far too often, listen, it's team wide, but. And I've had this discussion. I've actually talked to Jason Tatum's mom, his his trainer Drew <laughs> Hanlon. I said, you, you know, I you know, your son is incredibly talented, um, and I you know, listen. There's frustration because I don't think necessarily he gets a lot of calls, but every time you throw your hands up in the air for that second and a half that your hands are in the air, Golden State is sprinting in the other direction, getting five on four and four on threes. And listen, they're human. All of us are human. They're reacting to you showing them up. Um, and I think it's the finals. Like maybe in round one, two, and three, you can get past, you can get over with that, but not against this Golden State Warrior team who is so dangerous in transition. These half court defenses are so good. Both of these teams are well below their offensive rating in the half court in the regular season and the early rounds because that's how high level this is. And all of those momentary mistakes because of your frustration is absolutely putting you at a deficit. And uh, Andrew Wiggins has come to the fore certainly in games four and five, a combined stat line of 43 points and 29 rebounds. He has been all that plus the biscuit that the, the Timberwolves <laughs> thought – he could be yeah. when they drafted him first overall in 2014 out of Kansas. Where where do you think this is coming from, Doris? Yeah, I have to be honest with you. It just it it gives me great joy, and I'm going to tell you unequivocally that when he was in Minnesota, I could be critical of him. You know, you get captivated by this guy's physical tools athletically, but then the basketball skill set as well, the shot making, the tough twos that are always so critical in these environments. Listen. He's the one guy who can go and get his own when the beautiful game or Steph's pick and roll is not working. And there were moments where I thought the weight of a couple of his shots were truly extraordinary and I thought took some of the wind out of the sails of Boston. And it's great, right? I go back to when he arrived in Minnesota. I think he was 19 years old, Rich. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and some of the criticism was warranted. We questioned whether he cared deeply about the game, how passionate was his competitive heart. But boy, oh boy, isn't it like wonderful to see someone who had come through so much perform on this stage and live up to all the physical gifts he has. And listen, you know, we talk about Boston's defense. Gary Payton II and Andrew Wiggins and, and Draymond Green are influencing their ability to win games with what they're doing defensively. Oh, you, you, to see Andrew Wiggins get down in the stance and, and contest and contain 
and pressure Jason Tatum into some of these turnovers. This is something else to watch. Doris Burke joining us from Boston, Massachusetts, where she and the rest of the ESPN radio crew will be calling Game 6 for those of us who need to listen to it, want to listen to it on ESPN radio, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. All right, so let's talk about Game 6 and what to expect. Um, uh, we, I guess it's been 234 games since we've seen Steph react to not making a three. Um, so, so it's been a while. I don't know if we have a frame of reference on how he might show up to game six. We know, uh, Clay better bring his earmuffs because the F bombs might be coming from uh, every seat in TD garden on Thursday night. What are you expecting Doris in this one? Yeah. Well, just so you know, Rich, Mm -hmm. I have tried to predict every game and I've been wrong every single time. (laughs) So what's your level of expectation? How about that? We'll, we'll soften the Uh, prediction business here for you. Listen, yeah, so so the one thing about the Celtics is we have to remember they were 20 and 21. They were really hard to watch. They hadn't figured anything out. Um, and, and for them to have overcome that level of adversity, for them uh, to win a road game against a Miami team that gives no quarter, to, to win in seven against Giannis Antetokounmpo and all the pressure he can put on you, I expect a great response. I expect a nasty environment. Um, and I would say, see if you're going to make me pick. No, 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 no. You don't have to pick. I'm just saying, like, what what do you think the adjustment? Well, you know the adjustments of each coach is going to try and make, and certainly yeah. what they've been trying to do over the last five games, and how you think you know Game Six might might be uh, just an extension of that, just uh, the the yeah. organism that is the NBA Finals. Yeah, I mean, I think for the Boston Celtics, and I'm going to pick the Boston Celtics just because why not go out on the limb? Who sure. cares about being wrong? But, okay. <laughs> um, I do expect um, Jason Tatum to sustain the level that he, you know, performed at in terms of his scoring, because I just think he's that good, and I think they'll do a better job of sort of, you know, continuing to be patient and move the basketball. I'm not saying they're not going to turn it over. It is who the Celtics are. They're going to turn it over some. But I do think that they're going to be a little bit more consistent, play with a level of offensive force, get the pieces moving. At their best, the Boston Celtics are a multi-drive and kick, keep moving it, change sides of the floor offense. And listen, it's going to bog down at times, but I think they'll be able to sustain it. And I think they win. And what Stephen Curry does is fascinating to me because does he, you know, follow up a tough game um, with more shot making, I don't. I don't expect him to not make a three, um, but I do wonder if Boston's defense is is maybe having a long term effect because we've seen that in the past where over the course of a series it does take its toll. Doris Burke here on the Rich Eisen Show again, Game Six on ESPN Radio. Uh, check it out with Doris, Mark Kestisher, PJ Carlissimo, who's one of my favorite people on planet Earth. And you, I mean, oh, that must be it. so much fun he's for you. The ab- he's the absolute best. The best. <laughs> I mean, you've worked with a ton of amazing people, um, Doris. You got a good uh, Hubie Brown story for me in any way, shape, or form? Oh, from gosh. Back in the day? You know, Rich, you know, we are lucky to, to interact with these athletes who are incredible and can mm-hmm. be awe-inspiring. I, I was a college student, mm-hmm. and I was actually Rick Pitino's nanny when he was transitioning between um, uh, the Knicks assistant job and the Providence head coaching job. I, I don't get in awe of anybody, but I grew up a Knicks fan. Yes. And and Hubie called the house. Rick was away recruiting. Uh, Hubie was going to pick Joanne, Rick's wife, up for, I don't know, a picnic or something. And I could barely speak on the phone because Hubie Brown had called the Patino residence. That's how in awe of Hubie I, I am and, and remain. And I'll say this to you. You know, I work with incredible colleagues because there's plenty about the NBA over the course of covering it that I didn't understand. And I needed explanation. Why this coverage? What does this terminology mean? Yes. And to their everlasting credit, Hubie Brown, Jeff Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, name an analyst. They have answered every question I've had. And I've, I've always so appreciated it from all of them. Well, Hubie created the lexicon, did he not? And I, <laughs> I, right, I mean, like he's he's the one who created most of the words that everybody uses when re- referring to the the floor, the painted. Area. I assume you spoke to him from the painted area of the Patino <laughs> residence when you answered the phone back no in the day. Doubt. And, what people don't know is like the greatest joy of, of, of part of this is the dinners you've had, we've had with Hubie over the years. Yes. Because his stories go back to the ABA. 
the wild, crazy days of the, you know, the ABA and then him coming over to the NBA. I, I don't know if people understand, Rich, that there's no human being alive who has affected more generations right. on every continent than Hubie Brown. <laughs> Think about all the teaching he did with all the clinics overseas and his passion for the game at 80 plus years old. He, he's a marvel. He is an absolute marvel. So who was your Nick when you say you were a Nick fan growing up? Doris, yeah, who was it? Uh, I love Bernard King. Oh. You know, before before Bernard King's knee injury, the NBA had nothing for him. And Hubie tells me this, you know, one of the things he would say to me as you're trying to learn the NBA game is, you know, um, who is your best player mm. and what are you doing to get him his shots mm-hmm. in the areas on the floor that he was most comfortable? Well, for Bernard, that was the low box. And send what you may at him. Forget about it if you tried to check him because I'm telling you, at his best, this guy was a bad man. Oh, well, number 30, anytime I see another Nick wearing it, it's, it's, it's bizarre to me, Doris. Bernard King was my guy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you could hear, I audibly reacted when you said the name Bernard King. That was my guy, too. That was my um, good. I'm glad we have something in common. That, that gives me oh, great joy. Many things. I mean, I, I, you, must, you also have a better jumper than me. But I, I attempted, <laughs> you know, the baseline. He would turn to the baseline from the lower box. And then yes. just the, his shot, he would, he would make it from the baseline, turning around, didn't matter which way, which box, his turnaround jumper high, to the baseline was was guard. lethal, lethal. He had high hips and a big backyard. And listen, <laughs> a big backyard is a good thing as a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were referring to my actual backyard where I was missing those jumpers <laughs> as a child, which has <laughs> caused me to talk about it more, <laughs> more and more. I mean, my gosh, yeah, I, I just remember those battles Hubie in the old I guess what Joe Lewis arena against the Pistons and Trapuca and Isaiah before the bad boys those those were the those were the Knicks teams that I thought when when Bernard was teamed up with Patrick Ewing would win championships and of course Bernard uh, was just never healthy to make that happen you know and that's the long-suffering Knicks fans oh. that we are <laughs> yes indeed yes indeed uh so uh, what uh, uh, I just want to ask you one uh, story that a lot of people are talking about Doris Burke before I let you go on this day uh what is what are your two cents uh, on the uh story uh it's not a story he said it uh, uh, Anthony Davis not picking up a basketball since he said uh, April 5th w- what do you I, what do you I, think of that yeah I was shocked. I mean, with the level of uh, underperformance of that team, the the mighty struggles, and I know they didn't play much together, um, but you are a part of the storied organization. I don't. What I don't understand is why would you say it? I mean, if it's true, why would you open yourself up to the criticism of that and the fact that you? I mean, is it because he's not healthy? I I don't know. I, I here's the thing. And I, and I think it might have been Grant Hill. Forgive me, I can't remember who was the first to say this. This is a top five talent when he is passionate and healthy and cares. If this is a sign that you don't care, that's problematic because you are wasting extraordinary basketball ability. I I was absolutely stunned, Rich. What, can you tell me your reaction to it? Well, I mean, again, th- that is a similar thought that I had, Doris, that that – it is an indication if you don't know him, and I don't um, personally, that that he he doesn't he doesn't care because the the sense is that you get in the gym no matter what, right? I mean, Steph Curry when he's done with a night goes and he works out for an hour after he's Correct. dropped forty on a team, and right. I, I, I that that seems to me an indication of working on your craft that you're the best, uh, arguably that's ever shot the ball in the history of the game. And you need to work on your body, on yourself. Um, and that Anthony Davis hasn't touched a basketball does give an indication that he may not love it. Like he's not a grinder, right? Right. And greatness, greatness requires um, a price and a toll. And sometimes it's it's an unhealthy pursuit. Sometimes in terms of like the commitment required. Maybe unhealthy is the wrong word, but sacrifice is certainly appropriate. And that is what strikes me about Steph Curry. Like to watch. To watch teams target this guy as they did early in his career and see his physical transformation, hear Draymond Green when I spoke to him earlier in the year talk about he's the first guy in the weight room before practice and after he leaves, he's the last guy out. LeBron James, watch LeBron James, you know, compete in a in a conference finals game or a finals game and then be lifting the dumbbells with Mike Man, 
uh, Mancias in the back room after a game. It's it the greatness comes at a price, and um, you know, no, like Giannis Antetokounmpo, the guy remains hungry even though he's one of the most dominant forces in the game, and he continues to work on his game. I don't, I was shocked he said it, and I fear what it represents. Yeah, it set off an alarm bell with you. Right? Mm, no uh, doubt. No doubt. Doris, thanks for the time. Uh, you know, I know you, you, you think there might be a game seven. That means more tr- uh, travel for you. So, uh, <laughs> you know, hydrate um, and I, and uh, enjoy every second of it. You got a great front row seat. We're, we're listening. We, we love we love listening to you. We think you're terrific. Um, that's uh, not the royal we. That's the entire crew here on the show. And I hope this is the first of many conversations you and I can have. I would look forward to it. I've been a fan, as I told you, uh, from back at your ESPN days, and I thank you so much for having me. Right back at you. At HeyDB, Doris Burke on Twitter. I follow her. You should as well. At Doris A. Burke on Instagram. Joining us from the NBA Finals right here on The Rich Eisen Show.